Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about Disney pinching more pennies, uh, paywalling. <laughs> the, pinching more loaves. <laughs> pinching more loaves. Uh, Bob Chapek is pinching more loaves. Yeah, they're they're uh, paywalling their characters. Apparently, it, it seems like if you want to see Mickey and Minnie, you're going to have to pay to go to one of their expensive well, restaurants. And yes and no. Yeah. So well, we're gonna we're gonna talk about this. Lots of lots of penny pinching going on. This could be uh, because of an upcoming earnings call. We're seeing. Uh, some chatter about how Disney's undervalued, their stock uh -huh. is undervalued. And then their, value, their stock's starting to go up. I wonder how much they pay for that article. Yeah, and this is... Uh, <laughs> I'm this only is, partially kidding. <laughs> well, you know, uh, this is uh, this is coming on the heels of a, a rap article today that... That's uh, actually funny. <laughs> go Rap Pro, I get that reference. Yeah, I know, you've used that meme uh -huh, before. I have. Um, so yeah, so they're saying that Netflix is looking pretty good compared to Disney. Uh, Netflix supposedly rebounding. Their subscriber growth is rebounding. I, I don't know if I believe any of these companies anymore though, because I think they're gonna say whatever they have to say to get their stock price up because it's not good when you know the headlines are all, you know, stock price tanks, they're down, oh my God, subscribers are jumping ship because it just becomes this domino effect. So they're gonna do what they gotta do, yeah. right? But who knows? Who knows? Anyway, we're gonna we're gonna talk about the Disney cost cutting. Before we get into it any further, I gotta give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, Advent 9. Stick with us. I want to take the time to tell you about an exciting new book by author T. Allen Horn. Advent 9 releases on October 19th, 2022, across several platforms in digital and audio formats on Amazon, Audible. Barnes & Noble, Kobo, Apple Books, and Google Books. Advent 9 is a new young adult super punk adventure. It takes place in a world where superheroes used to exist, but they have since vanished, leaving only one hero behind. This hero is called Advent 9. He has no memory of how he began his career as a superhero, and he doesn't seem to be aware that any other heroes ever existed. His only clue to his past are violent nightmares where a disembodied voice forces him to count to nine. His routine is upended when a new menace named Trance Dragon appears. Trance Dragon is a mad empath who seeks to absorb all of humanity into himself. Stopping Trance Dragon will require Advent Nine to team up with an old guard supervillain and mad scientist maybe an even bigger threat since he knows what happened to all those other heroes. As this supervillain works with Advent 9, he comes to begrudgingly respect him, discovering something about the hero that Advent 9 doesn't even know about himself, that he has autism. Advent 9 was one of the last books ever to be edited by David Farland, best-selling author of The Rune Lords and the personal writing teacher of Brandon Sanderson, James Dashner, Brandon Mole and Stephanie Meyer. Farland praised Advent 9, calling it absolutely brilliant, and that this book marked the beginning of a new genre, superpunk. He also said that this was the first time a superhero story has truly worked as a novel. The audiobook version of Advent 9 is read by Michael Kramer, the voice of a thousand books who has read for dozens of best-selling authors, including James Patterson and Brandon Sanderson. Don't miss out on being one of the first to read Advent 9 when the book releases on October 19th. The ebook can be purchased digitally through Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Kobo, Apple Books, and Google Books. The audiobook version of Advent 9 is available through all major audiobook retailers including Audible, Barnes & Noble, Kobo, Apple Books, and Google Books. The audiobook can also be found on Spotify. That's Advent 9 from author T. Allen Horn available on October 19th, 2022. Check out the purchase links in the description below. And now back to the video. All right, guys, we are back. Thank you for the support. Uh, thank you to Advent9 again. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Over 277,000 subs. Uh, check out piratesandprincesses.net for more objective Disney Parks news, Universal Orlando news. Uh, try to be objective. Try. Try. It's getting harder and harder to be objective. Yeah, well, we've been calling out bullshit for a while, objectively. Anyway, so, yeah, so the newest thing is, according to WDW News Today, 
Disney is cutting select character meet and greets to focus on maintaining character dining and entertainment. So their official excuse, and this could be the case, it could have a labor shortage, right? It could be, you know, because it you know, fired everybody. Why the hell would you want to come well, back? Why pay more people when you could just keep saying record profits? Right. Um, the official explanation is going to be that, well, you know, there's only uh, there are only so many, um, you know, costume character actors to go around and we're going to save them for the dining experience. Unofficially, unofficially, my personal opinion is they're going to pay all the characters because why let you see Mickey for free, even though you paid a hundred and some dollars to get in the gate when you can pay an extra 50 bucks a plate and then you can see. Mickey. Right. And they're reopening character dining things. Yeah. And, and, and they've been doing that. And I don't think they're filling up as fast as they, even though people would agree, disagree with that because they're trying to get the dining reservations 60 days out and you can't get stuff. So I have no idea. So here's what they're going to do. They said that starting on the 23rd, the different different characters are going to be not where they were. So mm -hmm. usually Mickey Mouse is a town square theater Magic Kingdom. So when you walk in the Magic Kingdom on the right hand side is the big theater and you can go in and you can meet Mickey. Well, now you can't. <laughs> um, and then, then sorry, like Mickey Mouse isn't even for fucking free anymore. International Gateway at Epcot. Come Mickey's on. not going to be there. Donald and Daisy and Max were at Hollywood Studios. And you, they're not going to be there. Um, so they're saying the cuts are likely to accommodate the return of other character-based experiences like character dining and Fantasmic. Now, Fantasmic, we just finally got a reopening date. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Okay. So, and yeah, Pete Silly's Sideshow, which has a lot of characters, right? It's it's still close. Now, here's the thing. You pointed out, it just happens to but coincide. Again, WWE News Today did. Yes, they're doing a shindig right now. It's the Disney Executives Retreat, uh, where they're bringing all the different executives in and some Imagineers and stuff, because they just announced those things during D23, and now the Imagineers are coming. But part of the things that came out of this was, uh, it's, not been it's not been official, but also WWE News Today had it that the Play Pavilion oh, is actually yeah. going to be for sure canceled, that Josh DeMauro signed off on it, the cancellation. This does not surprise anyone because they haven't done jack shit with it. It was supposed to be done a while ago. It was one of the easier things to do. They haven't reopened. They haven't seen any activity, no announcements. They haven't mentioned it at all. And so I completely believe that they are scrapping it. And I'm betting you'll see like Wakanda or something shop there. Wakanda. Well, that was or, one of the rumors. Or just a store, just another store and, and more stores. And you have to pay to get in the stores to pay again. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah, right. It's like the, the, the Babylon Bee did a joke article that you have to pay $3,000 not to go to Disney. Yeah. So there was a rumor uh, before they announced Play Pavilion that they were going to maybe turn it into some kind of Marvel theme, something they talked about it being Wakanda, a, a character that's not tied up with the Universal Orlando deal. That's how they got away with Guardians of the Galaxy. So because they have Guardians Cosmic Rewind there, I would not be surprised if they didn't do something Marvel themed because they don't have a Marvel world at Walt Disney World like they do at Disneyland and Disneyland yeah, Paris yeah. and all that. So I'm wa waiting for something like that is what they're going to do. They could have a She-Hulk man slamming party time. That's right. She -Hulk. Do we, oh, do we get the slam Daredevil? <laughs> People would pay for that. <laughs> I'd pay for that. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, you would pay for that. I would pay for the costume, but you won't wear it. <laughs> anyway, back to family-friendly news on Disney. Family-friendly news. So, this is going on. The characters now are going to be behind a paywall. I, I don't know how, for, for how long. Because of no, labor I, shortage, no. quote unquote. This is quote. how Disney does it, guys. This is how they've been doing it for the last couple of years. Temporarily, we're going to require reservations to get into the park. Oh, yes. Temporarily. Now it's permanent. Now it's permanent. So what they do is they, they see, do a lot of people complain? Does it affect attendance or are our profits going to skyrocket? Because, well, you've already spent $5,000 for a Disney vacation. And gosh, your kids really want to get a picture and a hug from Mickey Mouse so you're going to pay an extra $200. 200 bucks to have brunch with Mickey and Minnie and see them for like 30 seconds. Our kids didn't like it that much. I thought it was annoying. It, they, they were little. They thought it was cute. When they got older, they're like, why are you doing this to me? 
<laughs> yeah, and the thing is, you can't you can't eat like you go to these buffets and like, that's the point. So they keep you busy. Then you see the characters. You don't, and you don't eat, eat as, as much. much. And it then probably your time is. is up. It probably is. Like you sit down to eat, and it's like, okay, I got to get up. Here comes Donald. Okay, here comes Goofy. I don't really care. I was eating my sandwich, and here, yeah. So people don't go to these things to actually eat. Um, yeah, I, I think this is definitely coming. So now ne next they'll have like a character pass or something like you got to get a character punch card. You know, you got to pay extra for all the well, characters. It's funny because some, there's some other things that are going on. Like today, Club Cool, for example, um, they are reporting in different places that people have noticed that now you used to, okay, Club Cool at Epcot. First of all, I'll explain what it is. It's a place in Epcot where you, you go in and you can try these different sodas. Like I have a picture of them from their Coke products from other countries. Um, and Beverly is the running joke, but actually Neon adores Beverly and will drink. All I these. love Beverly. Okay. He does. So I do. You go in and you get these little cups. If you scroll down, I have a picture um, with the cups. You get these little cups. Past tense. You got these. See, little like cups. these little cups stick out like nibbles. Those are cups. You also, it'd be great if you could just go up to suck on that. But they're cups. You know, like the the dentist, the old timey wimey dentist used to have old timey wimey. I mean, like eighties, nineties before they had they had the spit sucker machine. You'd get the little cup and you'd swish around and you'd spit out. Right. Like, that's what they're these like. Are. They're, they're itty bitty yeah. cups. Like they're like bath. They're smaller than bathroom cups type thing. Um, they do like nipples though. Uh, so you used to go get the sure. cups and get your drinks. Well, if you milk it, you get Coke or Beverly. Out. And, uh, so you would do that and then you throw the cups away. Most I people, hope. most people will get like a cup for each kind. I personally would just use one cup because I was one lazy and two, I didn't want to waste cups and I don't like making a lot of mess. But a lot of people will just get their cups, throw them away. So now according to this one person on Twitter, the cups are gone and the cast members are handing you one cup. When you go in, it's like when you go to the doctor and you pee in a cup. I don't know. Is it like, I was like a red solo cup and they put your name on it. Yeah. Well, right now it's a little, one of those itty bitty cups. Oh my God. And they hand you a cup and you get one cup and you're supposed to go and use that cup <laughs> per guess. So they're just, I mean, look, you want to talk about pinching pennies? Like realistically, how much money that, well, they probably spend a lot of money per year on the cups, but it's just like. And the trash. And the trash. But, but I'm, I'm saying, because isn't then, Coke responsible let's for say, Let's I mean, just say even then. Even if it's a dollar, an average of being a dollar a person, you're paying how much effing money to get into the park and they keep raising prices. Now, somebody else pointed out they think it might be a temporary issue because they said that there might be a supply. Because they said earlier in the day they weren't doing that. So it could be a low cup stock. But I also want to point out again that it's the meeting right now with the executives that are in there. They're currently seem to be making changes while they're in this meeting. So it's also possible they just decided, like, where can we cut costs? Yeah. I know. Yeah. Um, but it could also just be a temporary thing. I mean, I want to be completely fair about that. Wonder what the cost of paying a cast member to monitor cups is compared to just letting guests grab. It. I'm waiting for you to okay, fine, you get a little cup's five bucks. <sighs> yeah, a cup's five bucks, you go oh, in and try all you want. It'll be a collectible, uh, thimble sized a shot glass. Shot glass for like thirty dollars. Oh, speaking of cups, this is a good this is a good segue, right? Um we can we can Talk about them raising cup prices. They raised their fillable mug prices again. $22. Yes. $20 for your trip for the refillable mugs. For those who are unfamiliar, refillable mugs. When you go to a Disney Resort hotel, you can buy a refillable mug for your hotel. The mug is only good at your hotel. It's supposed to be for unlimited drinks. They say that, but actually they make you wait two or three minutes now between each drink. It used to be you could just keep refilling it. Yeah. So uh, looking at how the goalpost has, has moved over the last couple of years, you used to be able to, and this is probably why they did, but you used to be able to just sit at a machine and chug and chug. In Florida, chug. you will. In Florida, you will, right? No, no, no. We couldn't do that because they'll say, well, because people were just standing in front of the machines, which is probably true, but they made the cup smaller and uh, they have, uh, you know, only so many ounces per 10 minute chunk of time. It's not 10, it's like two. But well, still. still. I mean, I sit there and watch the timer like I am really thirsty. And it's like five, four, three, two, one. Orange Coke, here we come. Yeah, and, it, and that's what they did. So yeah. they did to try to slow people down from, you know, it's, it's it, you know, unlimited. It's not technically <laughs> unlimited. Um, <laughs> you get to have your refills. Well, they have keep they keep raising them. I remember when they were like. Fifteen ninety nine, and then they were like sixty nine, and then seventeen ninety nine. We first started getting them. I, th I guess were they were like twelve ninety nine. Were they? I don't think they were that low. Maybe fourteen. I want to say fourteen or fifteen. I mean, versus paying five bucks 
a, a bottle, it, it is a good deal, but it's also only good at the hotel. Right. And most people aren't at. Which and they only know, at your hotel you're staying. Only at, at the hotel so you're staying. So if you're visiting in. other hotel for some reason, you can't use it there. You can't use it in the parks. You can only use it at your hotel. Yeah. So they raised the price on that. Um, they also, okay. Oh, I was going to talk about the Magic Bands. So now they're doing the Magic Band Plus, right? And they were raising them. Now, before Magic Bands, you just did, a, you wore them and you got onto your rides and all that stuff. Well, now the Magic Band Plus is, is so much more. Now the Magic Band Plus, may, it does flashy lights at, during the, the fireworks show. And you can go up to the statues and they'll do stuff and say stuff because of your watch or Magic Band. I'm sorry. But it's rechargeable. The rechargeable I, I like because you couldn't recharge the other ones and they died and then you were stuck with them. So it is rechargeable. But they were starting out at $45-ish, which I, you know, okay, it's rechargeable. I, I can kind of see it because they used to give you them for free if you they stayed used in the resort. They used to give you magic bands for free. Now you yes. get a discount. But, you know, if you want the plus, and this is what Disneyland's getting to, the plus, you have to pay more. So they started out as 45 and then they went up to 55 And now the Tiana band has hit $60. Why? Because it says something. One, But I used to have a magic band that would make mu music sounds when it went through the... You know, when you scanned it at the gate, it's not a big deal to add a sound clip. They jacked up the 60 bucks because it, it has a sound clip in it. You know what they're probably going to do? It's like, okay, $45 for the magic band that talks, that won't shut up, that constantly plays commercials. Or you can pay another $45 to get the damn thing the to shut up. The commercial free, the ad free commercial version. Commercial free, the ad free version. Don't give ideas. If you tell them you can put ads on these things, they will do they it. They will. You'll be walking around like, boy, oh boy, it's hot. Wouldn't you like a Coca-Cola? Stop in for your free thimble full of Beverly. They would it, totally do that. And if Epcot. you don't want ads, you have to pay more. Wait, wait. Oh my God. Don't, don't. That's got, what they would do. We've got your don't credit card do. information stored no. on this band. So what we'll do no, is when you go stop. in, when you go in the no, club, cool. If you pay extra, you get two cups, and we'll give you front of the line access to Beverly. You can let go of my hand now. It's trying to stop you. Don't give them ideas because you know what? Oh my god! They're at the, oh they're they're at the totally, resort right now. They would totally do that. Stop! They're going to. Oh, you want to see Mickey? Uh, you're going to have to pay extra. Add, no, let's say ad free. They're going to do like an ad free magic band version. You get the one magic band, and you pay an upcharge because it talks, you know. Or no, yeah, you're right. You'll put it on all of them. And the only way you get the better ones is you have to pay more for the magic band that doesn't have the ads on it, or you have to pay so much per day in the park to not have ads. And I could see kids like comparing stories about their trips to Disney, and you have the one poor kid be like, I really like Disney, but the whole time I was down there, the stupid watch thing they gave me, it wouldn't shut up. And the other kid be like, that's because you're poor. You had to pay to get it to shut up. It's classist. I mean, I'm like, I'm still, we could joke about the bathrooms. I'm still waiting for fast pass bathroom lines. Oh, they'll have, I mean, I've seen restaurants, you know, they've got, you know, piss portals or whatever, like screens. You watch ads when you're taking a piss. Well, I um They'll I, do that at Disney. Well, too. I was joking and I'm only half joking. Some countries they do charge you to use the bathroom. Some of those countries are located in the World Showcase. The rep the, the countries that they represent. So I'm like, are you going to to get the a more authentic feel? Are they going to start charging you 5 francs to use the bathroom or whatever it is? Now that's what it was when I was in France. That's what they to go do pee. in France. Yeah. Just... I mean, I don't know if they still do it, but they did it then. I'm like, are they going to start the countries that do charge you to use the rest facility, restroom facilities? Are they going to start charging you to go to the bathroom to make it more okay. authentic? Wave your wave your magic band and they'll say something really cutesy Disney and Don't French. forget to wash your hands. Bonjour. Take a shit. <laughs> that's 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 my bad Mickey French Mickey. No. Bonjour everybody. Take a shit. No. One no, no, no. Oh my god. Oh my god. Universal could do that and they could do the Duloc song from <laughs> from Shrek, you know? <laughs> No, I'm, you know, all this stuff that Disney is doing just makes me um, more and more uh, anxious about Super Nintendo World. Like, I really want it now because I, I know Universal's probably going to do Well, Universal, like to be fair, their passes, like for their Express passes, are a lot more expensive. Oh, they're very expensive. However, you can use it for, for a lot more things, and you're not limited to one per each time or whatever. The Genie Plus, this is, this is all on top of the, the raising Genie Plus prices, raising ticket prices. Um, now, on the good news is if you happen to have an annual pass and you want people that got one before they stop selling them, you're going to be able to get a 25% discount. I think it's Shop Disney soon. They oh, spend more money. Okay. So they're going to raise. About this one. So they're going to raise the prices 20%. Oh. And then they're going to give you like a 
10, 15% discount. That totally tracks. That, that tracks. Um, so yeah, I forgot about this one too. Open and pin, open edition pin prices increased also. So they have limited pins and they have open edition pins. And um, they have jacked the prices up to, why do you need two color ranges for pink and yellow if they're the same price? No, because they used to always be different price. I remember Everybody doing that so they can jack it up again later. Leave the color bands on in case we want to raise the prices. On that's pay. exactly it. I mean, I would be like, did they just have like a piece of tape over this or something? It'd just be like, whoopsie. Well, they print it out, obviously. Look, uh, there's, there's, there's a little date at the bottom, 9.30 or 8.30. Can't tell God. me 9.30. Um, yeah, so next week we'll just switch it out for every month we're going to jack prices up. So the silver, I'm trying to think, the silver. They tell you down below. They you were know? like the $10 ones, right? I think so, Yeah. Silver's increased from not ten dollars to twelve. Yellow has increased from uh, thirteen to fifteen, and pink stayed the same at fifteen. Green, Green and blue, and blue are, no, are no longer there. Yeah, so it used to be uh, green and blue. I'm trying to remember the prices, but for the longest time, the the green and blue ones I thought were around six dollars, six to seven dollars. They were like the cheaper pin, mm -hmm. but like they were affordable. It was a lot of the pins I had, and they would go up and you'd, you know, the more expensive pins had like the moving parts or, right. you know, they were fancier, but just a basic enamel pin at Disney for the longest time was about six or $7 and now 15 bucks. Well, the basics are 10 at, at this point. Oh no, I'm sorry. They're, they're now, the basics 12. are now silver and they're $12. Because, I mean, that sounds good. They had these color categories before. Silver was there, yellow was there, and pink was there, but there were other categories that were lower. Cheaper. Those ones are gone. So when it was only a dollar, no, it's not. It's whatever the cheapest pin price was plus whatever to equal the silver price now. So are they no longer doing, because they used to have the uh, the blind bag, like the cast member pins that, that were like the budget pins know. that everybody would trade? You know, do they do that now? Or is Don't it just know. you got to... I haven't done the pin trading for a while. Oh, my God, they're going to start charging the trade pins. Like, okay, this cast member has all these pins. Yeah, for, for an extra five dollars, you can trade in your twelve dollar pin. You can get a special lanyard that shows you're allowed to trade pins. Get your pin pass. That's the only way. Oh my god, <laughs> they will do that. They'll be you like, you have to talking. you have to get a pin pass. You have to get a pin pass if you want to trade pins. And you have to and you can get so many pin trades per day with with this pin pass, but this other pin pass, yeah, this gives you more trades per day. And the thing is, is getting to the place, besides the, the cost increases, is getting to the place where we're running into issues with, it's so convoluted. Like on this day, this pass costs this much, but on this day, this pass costs another amount, but you don't know what the, how much pass is gonna be till we tell you. And it's, it's so, um ridiculous how you have to plan now you have to get reservations you want to see characters and things that it's just people can't they're going not just for expense reasons but for the fact that it's 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 too you need a vacation from your vacation yeah. which you needed before when you went to disney because yeah. there's so much walking and stuff but now it's like it's like it becomes less and less attractive because it's so effing hard it's just, it's, it's beyond ridiculous. I mean, paywalling Mickey Mouse is like the epitome of greed. It, it, it just, I don't even care. I don't even want to go. I, I mean, we went down to Universal last weekend. I took the kids down for Halloween Horror Nights. And I think that's the first time I've ever gone to, to Florida and not even bothered going to Disney with an annual pass. Like, I didn't even care. Yeah. I don't even want to, I don't even want to go. There's nothing there. I, we went over the summer because we had a family thing, but I don't even care. I'm anymore. getting to that point too. And I was the one who wanted to go all the time because I grew up going to Walt Disney World. And for me, it's like a you know, family connection, but I'm to the place where, I mean, I have to sometimes because of my job, but that if I don't go, I'm not, I, I, if, I, if I can send somebody else, I'm fine with that. It's cheaper to pay to send other people. I, I mean, I don't even know if we're going to renew our annual passes. I, I don't know. The company we grew up loving no longer exists. It's just, that's it. It doesn't exist anymore. The, it doesn't. Um, well, here we are. I don't know. We're going to wrap it up? Yep. All right. So uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll, we'll talk later. Bye.